In high school, I was mainly interested in music. I was playing the keyboard all the time. Already had started my first rock band, but I knew that if I was going to keep mom and dad happy, that someday I'd have to be a doctor. As a grad student at Harvard, I learned that Down syndrome individuals have an extra copy of the smallest chromosome, chromosome 21. And by middle age, a Down syndrome person will start developing Alzheimer's pathology. So that led me to speculate, maybe there's an Alzheimer's gene on chromosome 21. No Alzheimer's gene had ever been found up to that time. My mentors at Harvard said, this is way too risky a project for a grad student. So I was highly urged not to do this. And I was pretty rebellious as a kid. Actually, I was still playing in a rock band at the time I was in grad school, making side money. So I wasn't hearing too well either. So I didn't listen. And it turns out it's completely correct. If you have too much of that gene activity, you make more of the toxic substance in the brain that triggers Alzheimer's disease. So I have been searching for Alzheimer's genes and trying to turn those into new therapies ever since. Throughout life, I remained a musician and I kept playing with friends, doing studio work. My own creative process in the lab seems to correlate with the ability to keep writing new music. If I don't play music every day, my creativity is not at peak. GQ magazine had this article called Rock Stars of Science, and they picked people who were so-called rock stars in their field, and we did a photo shoot with real rock stars. I got teamed up with Joe Perry of Aerosmith. Afterwards, I got to speak with Joe Perry, and we came to the conclusion that the best music, just like the best science, comes from clearing your mind and letting new ideas flow and not being derivative. We also agreed that once you take that idea into the lab, it must be done responsibly with true scientific method. Same thing with Joe Perry. Once you bring in that sound of music you have in your head, when you bring it to the stage on your guitar, your responsibility is to the people you're playing for. Play it well, don't just play them a bunch of garbage. So we had this very interesting conversation, and then I said, you know, I, I play. And I figured that 10,000 people a day must tell them, hey, I play. But in this case, um, Joe invited me eventually to come and jam. And we're jamming, and we're having a great time, and Joe says, you know what? We're playing the Jay Leno show in a few weeks. Why don't you come and play with us? Right down the falls in the perils of your skull. And next thing you know, we're playing Muhammad Ali's 70th birthday party in Las Vegas with people like Slash and Lenny Kravitz. And then ultimately, I ended up playing uh, keyboards for Aerosmith on their new album. It's just turned into a rekindling of my musical career. Let's face it, if I had stayed a musician, would I have a chance to play with Joe Perry and Aerosmith? No. So an old dream came true in music because of science, starting with a conversation about the similarities between music and science.